Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I am looking at bringing old photos back to life from Microsoft on GitHub. Now, you may be thinking, oh, this is just another deoldify. No, no, it's not it's not quite that. It's it's similar but different. It does alter the colours, as you can see, it makes them pop out a little bit more or bring them to life if you like. Uh, but yes, let's let's have a look at uh, getting this thing installed and running. You can of course play with it on Google Colab if you don't have a computer, but I am going to be running this locally. The code is tested on Ubuntu with NVIDIA GPUs and CUDA installed. Python 3.6 is required to run the code. So in order to get that requirement, I am just using Anaconda. So the first thing to do there is of course git clone this repository and change directory into there. So there we are. Now, I have already created my conda environment, but you would conda create minus minus name, whatever name you want to give it. I have called it photo life in this case. I'm also using Python 3.7. Once you've activated your conda environment there, with conda activate photo life, uh, you can then carry on with this installation. So there's a number of things to download. As you can see here, it changes into the face enhancement directory and then does a git clone and gets all this stuff so you'll need to run each one of those in turn and also the download here for the face enhancements so just run all that code and you'll be happy next up is the pip install minus r requirements.txt now this will work for a lot of people and for some people it won't you'll need to do this extra step here so if like me you've got one of the new nvidia rtx 3000 series cards such as an rtx 3080 then you'll find that you need CUDA 11. So again, with Conda, you can install PyTorch, Torch Vision, Torch Audio, and the CUDA Toolkit 11.0 from the PyTorch channel. So just make sure you put minus C PyTorch on the end there, and you'll have everything ready to go, and you can start running this. So we're on the how to use section here, and we are looking at the full pipeline. Now, the thing with this is uh, compared to something like Deoldify, where, you know, you're you can use quite large images. Um, this will run out of memory quite quickly, uh, especially with the scratch detection as well. So for the full pipeline, uh, I found images of about 512 by 512 are okay. You can go a little bit higher, uh, depending on how much VRAM you've got. Uh, but if you do the scratches as well, then no, that they're, they're just gonna be really small. So let's have a look at the, some of these. For example, we've got this one here and the image property so we're 720 by 720 and uh, we've got a number of images there that are all around the same size so let's pop down there and then with scratches these are the same images uh, but much smaller this time so if we have a look at this there we go so that's 400 by 400 that one now i've left a couple in there uh, that are too big that will make my gpu run out of memory so you can see what happens when that occurs okay so for images without scratches, you can see there, you just specify an input folder, an output folder, and which GPU you want to run on. Okay, awesome. So let's have a go at that. We'll pop that in there and pop that down there. So Python run, input folder is the test images old. So that's the ones without the scratches. And these are going into the output directory. So this will go through and there are a number of different stages and you can see all the stages if you go into the output directory. So let's have a little pop in there. So here we are at the moment, we're running through stage one, overall restoration on each of the images. So let's just see, Ooh, we've got three different directories here. So we've got the origin, input image, and the restored image. So we can see already that there's a little bit of restoration going on here. Some of the images, yeah, okay. And uh, we'll just let that do its thing and uh, eventually it will go through all the stages. Stage two here, we've got uh, face detection. There are no faces. Stage three, face enhancement for those that do have faces. Uh, there is obviously a little bit of a warning there, but that is not too bad. They will come through from that. And then finally, it blends the images together. So if it did find a face and uh, enhanced it, then that will put it into the final output. So we've got the stage two detection there. You know, oh yes, it's found a, it's found a face and then the stage three face output there. So that's each image. Again, it's going through each face. And then finally, we've got the final output. So what do these look like? Let's have a look. There we go. All right, so that's the final output. 
Now, if we compare this to the original set of images, so we've got the test images old here. Let's open that. If we have a look at them side by side, it's a lot easier to see that the uh, the color of the skin there has changed. So that's uh, that's that's the most noticeable change there, and uh, the hair a little bit as well. It seems to have more more texture to it than, than that previous one. And what's it done for this one? Now that one, whoa! Now that one, you can really really see the difference. That's um, yeah, that that's put a lot of um, sort of skin texture in the beard. It's very different, isn't it? You, know, you can see every little hair coming through and the, the, the very, very shiny nose and it's giving him red cheeks and everything. So yeah, that's that's quite different from the uh, from the original one and, and the eyes as well. The eyes. Yeah, okay, let's have a look at the next one. There you go, quite creepy picture. I like this one. So yeah, again, similar sort of thing. The, the skin tone has changed uh, and the eyes and the nose and the mouth and the hair and even these little things in the hair there have all become sort of more more clear. Let's have a look at the next one. Again, a similar thing with the face. So the eyes have become brighter. The same with the, the skin texture around there. A little thing on the, on the scarf there too. Now, a difficult one, the paintings. It's, it's got rid of a lot of the grain. So the background is the most noticeable difference there for me straight away. And a little, little bit across the hair there. A little bit across the hair, but... Uh, yeah, and some of these edges around here are a bit more... Okay, another test case here. So we've got, yeah, like a very, very grainy pattern on this, which has become a lot more smooth. So everything's a lot more smoothed out on that one. And let's have a look at this one. So again, that's sort of taken the face and made it uh, quite a lot more realistic, so to speak. Uh, yeah, the, the colours and the smoothing, it's got a different texture. And this one's strange because it's got some really weird eyes going on. Again, the beard, it's got lots of hair, lots of hair going on there. Those eyes, the eyes. Another painting, again, not much change there. It's, it's done a little bit of skin tone, the lips, some, yeah, slightly clearer on the, the little thing around the neck. But uh, yeah, uh, these, these are the ones that come with it. Uh, so there's the image, sort of like a, an old 1970s photo, and now it's like a, a four megapixel picture. Yeah, so that's Quite a good example. Uh, that's another one of their examples. So again, you can see there the colours are, there's a lot better sort of difference between them. So rather than it all being sort of this washed out green colour, uh, the blues have now come through and the greens and whites are, you know, quite quite observably different. Same with this one here. So a lot of the, uh, a lot of this, all the dust and stuff has been uh, smoothed out and the colours brightened as well. So that, that looks quite good. Same with the Moulin Rouge. It's, mostly visible in the sky there. There's like this weird smeary sky which does actually end up looking quite like clouds um, compared to this sort of grainy, grainy mix. Now here's one uh, that, you know, again you see it's made the colours brighter. It's still got the scratches here. Go through the scratches in a minute. Uh, that's one of their photo examples. Again you can see there the, the colours are most, uh, most vibrant in this one. And again their test image there. Have I got any more? Oh, yep, yeah, that's their test image. Again, the grain has gone from that, and that's a lot smoother. And same thing on that one. And this is one that I picked out. Uh, so there, you can see each individual person is now sort of highlighted more there, and like a lot more outlined and, and visible, and even the text is uh, a little bit, bit clearer. So uh, yeah, it's done, done quite a good job on that one. Uh, this one. Yeah, that's a very difficult one to restore, as you can see, but it's uh, it's detected the face. You can see it's done a little bit on the eyes, nose and mouth, and uh, the body is generally more visible than the uh, original picture. Again, on this one, the detail there on the, uh, the corset is uh, is more visible, and even the, the crack there looks quite a lot clearer. And on this one, we've got sort of a much more vivid face. It's uh, you know, you can see the colours there of change and the contrast. It's yeah, it's quite nice. And on this one, again, it's changed the colours, so it's it's balanced things out a bit. You know, it's uh, it's done a good job. Yeah, I like all of these. And this this one was quite impressive. I did like this one. See again, there it's sort of washed out, grayscale, grainy, and here the the contrast on it, it's just like yeah, yeah, that's a very very nice picture. And uh, same again here. So we've got the facial detail. 
You've got the extra hairs on the beard, you can really see the little moustachey thing there. And that hair's a lot more clearer. It's It seemed to have uh, gone a bit astray with the buttons here. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but uh, yeah, the rest of it looks very good. And even with a drawing it'll go, okay, yeah, that's fine, I can, uh, I can sort out the balance on that. And there we are to the end of those. Now, if we have a look at the same thing again with the scratches, now we'll pop this one down here. So this is that same set, but with scratches. And again, these images are a lot smaller. So I will just pause time momentarily while these go through. Okay, and they're done. So we just have a little scroll back. We can just see this error here. So there's a couple of errors here. So skipping that one and skipping that one, it uh, tried to allocate this amount of memory and it, it couldn't. So that's the error you'll see uh, basically if you're if your pictures are too big, you'll need to make them a little bit smaller so that it fits into your VRAM. Now let's have a look at those. So we've got the output here with Scratch. Again, you've got the uh, the stages for each of them. But we'll just have a look at the final output. There's a little bit smaller. Now with the Scratches, as you can see, it's a lot smoother. Everything is a lot smoother there. Very similar, but the uh, the Scratches are, are non-visible. We seem to have some strange artifacting going on there a little bit, but uh, yeah, that's 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 very smooth, got some weird eyes there. Those are their test cases that they, they provide with scratches. Uh, and that is, yeah, it's unfortunate because you have to make that image so small, um, it doesn't really, yeah, it's it's not, not so good. Scratches there, mm, yeah, it's it's quite a mottled background still. Uh, it's, it's kept the crack in the rock, which is interesting. It's, it's done quite well there. And uh, yeah, cleaning up the scratches. Those didn't have so many scratches on. There you go. Anyway, okay, so that is with and without scratches. And uh, yes, they're, they're very tiny images. Um, now, as you can see here, you also get this little scratch mask as well. So if we have a look in here and you will see some masks. And this is basically where it sort of detects the scratches. So there we've got a, a mask on that one. So that's what it thinks are the scratches and what it's sort of effectively removed from the image for you. Pop that down. There we go. Now, uh, there's this global restoration as well, um, which is uh, curious, um, and I haven't really done much with, to be honest. Um, because if you go into the global and, and try and run this one, for example, it will say um, no, no. I need to. I need to have a mask. I need to put this test mask in somewhere, uh, and I'm not entirely sure, you know, what it wants for the mask in those particular cases. So yes, uh, and also my other reason for not really bothering too much with trying to find out what the masks were for was because when I ran this one, the Python quality test, then let's just have a little run at that. I'll show you what this one does. Whoopsie. Uh, yep, sorry, I'm going to change into the global directory first for that one. And let's try that again. Okay, so this goes into the output QR directory and that won't take too long because these are quite small. Now, what this seems to do in restored image is gives me, or it finds all the faces, it seems to, to do that. And uh, well, apart from in some cases, <laughs> uh, but uh, yes. So, and they all come out at 256 by 256. So that was interesting. That was, that was interesting. Um, but it did seem to find the faces. So I did make um, a new data set for Stargan 2 out of it uh, and that was quite quite good so if I show you that one let's go to the old data sets and this is the faces because they all came out 256 by 256 so it ended up making uh, making quite a nice data set full of eyes and faces all ready for style again so that that was at least one use for it anyway <laughs> but uh, yes the main thing you'll want to run is uh, basically the full pipeline at the top just that first command Anyway, there you go. Have a go at that. It's nice and fun. Uh, do enjoy. Rodent out.